and his gang. Every single candidate comes to the Jewish community, tells us how much they love Israel, and then stabs us in the back once it's over, once they get elected. Throw the bums out. I don't care which party they are. We have got to take a stand to not put up with this crap one more second. Yes, sir. Good, good morning, uh, distinguished commentators. Uh, my question for you is that I, I uh, look at it, I watch uh, HL TV uh, channel 29 uh, almost every day. Uh, about three weeks ago, I read it. Uh, they announced that England was readying their bombers to eradicate the nuclear plant, uh, uh, plant in Iran. Uh, as yet, I haven't seen anything going on that way. And I'm wondering if you have any information on that. Also, my second question is, uh, what is England's uh, role in, in this world to get to them? Thank you very much. Here, Joe, you want to <laughs> Listen, we're, we're praying for somebody to do something that wrong, whether it's the uh, U.S., Israel, or, or as you mentioned, England. Uh, but certainly something needs to be done. I would also I would also mention, which hasn't been discussed, when we went to war with Iraq, we left a void, you know, in, in Iraq. We we uh, we took out, you know, in the past when Iraq had their war with Iran, the United States policy was to support both sides. Why? Because we didn't want to have a, an imbalance of power over there. Today we have an imbalance of power since we've gone to war with Iraq for better or worse. And, and, uh, and I would say that imbalance of power will certainly help Iran. As, as, as Bob mentioned, uh, Iran will go into Iraq once we, once we have all of our troops out of there. Uh, the only thing, really, that would stop Iran from going into Iraq would be, uh, would be a, a, uh, a war with Iran. I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, Play, play, uh, you know, play war games here and say, you know, hey, we should go to war with their country because we don't want them to go into another country. Uh, but the truth is that in order to, um, in order to stop that void from occurring, there would need to be a, a war with Iran. But I would say also uh, that today, if, if Iran indeed is building nukes, then uh, then action needs to be taken, whether it's like you say, England or, or Israel or or the United States. But something needs to be something needs to be done. All right. Uh, that, is, that is not the answer, that's not the question I asked. I, 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 I asked, what is England doing to eradicate that nuclear power plant? I, I, I don't know what England is doing. I'll tell you that when my wife and I went to Israel a year ago, we had, we had gone and spoken to various uh, military individuals. And, and police as well, and that was one of the chiefs of, of police over there, and and, uh, and they were discussing with us how they were how they were doing, you know, their own their own workings in Israel, preparing for preparing for a possible uh, military uh, attack on Iran. As as well, uh, we 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 read articles or reports about how the United States is having joint operations with Israel, uh, possibly. Uh, possibly operations dealing with a potential attack on on Iran. Uh, so, but I, I don't know with regards to uh, with regards to England, but certainly they're they're at least practicing uh, for for a possible uh, possible military strike in the in the very near future. Thank you. Wait, I'll take if I can. Wait, wait, wait. I'd like to respond to this also. Something has happened in the last few weeks with England because the Iranians attacked the English embassy. Mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of strange since the British have been so far up the Muslim behind politically on every single level, even before the Holocaust. 
But the bottom line is something definitely is going on. But I can't see England taking it on its own. It would have to be part of a European Union scenario. It would have to be coordinated with the Israelis. And I just have to say I don't trust the British. But something definitely happened a couple of weeks ago where the British ambassador was thrown out. There were riots against the British embassy in Iran. So something is definitely cooking in there. And maybe there is an, uh, an antagonism that will finally get the British to side with Israel. Uh, the British have never sided with Israel on any level. Even when the Israelis were called Palestinians back in 1948, the British were always with the Arabs and Arab oil. The British never bombed the rail lines into the death camps. Uh, the British put uh, the Holocaust survivors in concentration camps after the Holocaust. Uh, there's a whole history of the British dumping on Israel on every single level. So, London stand doesn't help either. On the other hand, <laughs> you should London stand. there is an Olympics coming up in London. We don't know how all of this is going to play out with that. So I'm not sure that I can put all my weight on what the British are going to do on our behalf. The question is, what is the United States doing? We are the key player in all of this. Okay, and I remember last year, uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski, that Nazi from the, uh, who was it, uh, Carter administration, he comes out and says point blank that the United States should shoot down any Israeli plane that goes and tries to attack Iran. This is an advisor from Carter. Mm. Okay? Nobody opened up their mouth about that either. That's the like Michael. Is, that's like maybe Michael Shoyer. The US is the only one that could really open up a front against Iran. That's all I'm suggesting. But if, if the British want to do it, maybe we, there's still some hope left. I wouldn't hold my breath. The comment about uh, Brzezinski is reminiscent of uh, Michael Shoyer, a real bad actor. Yeah. Next question. So, uh, uh, Gary Hill, I'm a member of the temple. I think the topic for today was Iran's nuclear arms race and its impact on the security of Israel. Do you want to have a fair debate on President Obama's impact on the security of Israel? Can you invite people who are prepared to present both sides of that issue and not just have a diatribe against President Obama? I think there's many Jews in the United States who support this president. Don't you want to respond to that? Okay. Well, uh, as I understand, President Obama's main what? chief 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 spokesman in the media today, and and uh, and, uh, and chief excuse maker for President Obama, Devin Wasserman Schultz, was indeed invited to to speak here today. Uh, she, I guess, chose not to, and as well, she chose not to send a representative from her campaign uh, to speak here as well. Um, maybe, maybe they understand that that uh, and speaking about these issues, there's 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 no excuse. Uh, President Obama, it was President Obama that ignored the situation, as as has been mentioned. It was President Obama that ignored that situation uh, when the when the riots took place in Iran. Uh, those rioters, uh, indeed, uh, are are uh, are as pro-American as we'll get in the Middle East. Uh, but when, it took, when, when, uh, when the Egyptian rioters uh, happened, when that took place, it was President Obama one day that supported Mubarak, and then all of a sudden, a few days later, he supports the rioters. And then when he gives his big speech, his 1967 speech, all of a sudden he supports, he supports uh, the riots in, in Egypt and Syria and, and Libya. And then when he, when he spoke in front of the United Nations, he told the world that the United States is going to is going to uh, give support, meaning financial support, to Libya, and then Hillary Clinton goes and uh, and meets with the Libyans and says that there's going to be a financial aid package going to Libya at the same exact time, as I mentioned, that a group, the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, a group that's found on the U.S. State Department's list of foreign terrorist organizations, is in control of the military.